Hello, this video is going to show how we can achieve functional safety using the SEGA Embedded Studio for RISC V. So this is SEGA Embedded Studio and I've created a, a very simple project here. Let's check we can build this. So we'll do a rebuild and there we can see I've used the GCC compiler in this particular case and we've successfully built the executable. So we should be able to debug this. So let's go and debug using the simulator. And I should now be able to step into this code. And there we can see very clearly I'm able to debug it. Right. Now, there's a number of things I'd like to be able to do. First of all, I'd like to be able to look at this code and see, well, is it compliant to a standard such as the MISRA C 2012? I'd like to be able to measure a number of metrics on the code, getting an idea of things like, uh, well, how complex is the code? What's the psychomatic complexity of all these functions? I'd then like to be able to execute the code just like I did. And as the code executes, I want to be able to find out, well, how much of that code have we exercised? Now, I imagine I will not get 100% coverage from that. And so I will then complement that coverage by doing some unit testing with TB run. So the starting point is to analyze the source code and to save time. I've already done that. So let's take a, a look at a code review. In this particular case, we can see we have a, a number of violations. Let's take a look at this one here. Username starts with underscore. Well, that's very easy to fix. That won't take me long at all. Right, so I could look at the other violations, but let's take a look now at maybe some metrics that we've measured. So to do that, I'm going to look at a system call graph. And the system call graph is going to show us all the functions inside our project. We can see how they're interconnected and we can see some are, are colored in green, indicating these are actually system calls. Now, let's take a look at maybe putting this into a view where we can see metrics that give us an idea of maintainability. And the most useful one is probably the cyclomatic complexity. And I can sort and I can see that this is the most complex function. So let's view that in a flow graph. And a flow graph is showing us a graphic representation of the code. If I was to click on a block of code over here, we can see the corresponding block in the flow graph. If I was to click on a block over here in the flow graph, we can see the corresponding block inside the code. Now I want to be able to execute this code and I want to find the coverage. So first of all, we're going to instrument the code and we're going to put uh, probes at the start and at the end of each block. And after we've executed the code, we'll be able to see the coverage. So let's go and execute this. So I'm going to perform the dynamic analysis. So this is going to, first of all, instrument the source code. It's then going to build it with a GCC compiler. It executed it on the simulator. We've got the results back and we should now be able to see well, what coverage did we obtain. Well, let's go to the system core graph. And this time, let's put this into a view where we can see the coverage. And the only function we haven't got full coverage from is the same integer to ASCII. So let's time, this time, let's take a look at a flow graph and put it into the coverage mode. So we can see in green, we can see the paths we've taken through the code. And in red, we see the code we haven't executed. So we can also see the various branches that have not been executed. So if I want to get additional coverage for these blocks we've not executed, then I can simply use TB run and do some unit testing. So let's do that. So let's close that down. And now let's go and invoke TB run. And I've already created some test cases. So I'm simply going to go and open some existing test cases. So inside here, I have some for the function integer to ASCII. And now we can see we have seven test cases. We can see each one has different inputs and expected outputs. So let's go and execute this. So again, it's this time it's generating a harness. It built it with a GCC compiler. It's executed on the simulator. And now we can see most importantly, the tests have passed. 
So that means with these inputs, we got the expected outputs. Also now we should be able to see that our coverage has increased. And if we take a look at the integer to ASCII function, we can now see we have 100% statement coverage, 100% branch decision coverage, and also 100% MCDC. So hopefully that's given you some information on how we can use the SEGA Embedded Studio for RISC V. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA. Thank you.